In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to using R for data visualization. R is an open source language and environment for statistical computing and graphics. It provides a wide variety of statistical and graphical techniques, such as linear and nonlinear modeling, statistical tests, time series analysis, classification, clustering, and much more. Facebook uses R to analyze user behavior. Google uses it to help make their online advertising more effective. Orbitz uses it to suggest the best hotels, and Trulia uses it for statistical modeling. You can create beautiful static visualizations in R. Here are just a few examples. We're going to be using an integrated development environment called R Studio. I'll also demonstrate how we can use Adobe Illustrator or other graphical programs to refine the charts that we create in R. So you want to make sure that you have R Studio installed on your computer. It's free, open source, and works great on all platforms. So once you have R installed, take a look at the workspace. Here we're looking at the R Studio interface, which is organized into four panes. The first pane here that I'm pointing to is your workspace. This is where you're going to import all of your data. The left pane is where you'll actually be able to see your data sets. The console below is where you're going to be typing your commands. And to the right is where you're going to see the output to create your beautiful visualizations. It'll also be a place where you can install extra packages that you may need. So when working in an R, it's really important for you to organize your space so first, create a folder on your desktop called My Data Viz. This will be the place where you store everything that you need. Inside that folder, create two subdirectories called Data and another one called Charts. Next, be sure that you've already downloaded the data for this lesson. Store that data in your My Data Viz slash Data directory. The next thing that you want to do in R Studio is to change your working directory. Go to the Session menu, say Set Working Directory, and then go to Choose Directory, navigate to your desktop and find your My Data Viz folder. The next thing that you want to do is install the appropriate packages that we'll need. And we do that by going to this pane over here, selecting on the Packages tab. And you'll notice all of the packages that are available. The one that we'll be using today is called ggplot2. There's a standard way to plot an R without installing this package. However, we're going to use ggplot2 because it gives us more control and allows us to create graphs that represent both univariate data and multivariate data. Select that, and you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's actually a command where you'd actually have to type this command in, but since we have this nice GUI interface, you don't have to. The one method or function that we're going to use today to plot is called quickplot, or qplot. And here is basically the what I call the template for that particular method. So let's begin our first exercise in RStudio. Our task is to create a static display to clearly show how internet usage has changed in China since 1990. The first question I have for you is, what type of data are we working with? Well, we're working with the economic indicator from the World Bank from 2012. This indicator represents the fixed broadband internet subscribers per 100 people. Let's take a closer look at the data. So how do we do this? Well, we need to load our data in R by going to Workspace, Import Dataset, and then picking chinainternet.csv. So now R is asking how we want to import our data set. The first thing is, what, what's the name going to be? This is the name that you're going to reference at when you create visualizations or manipulate this data set. Heading, do we have a heading on our data? Meaning, do we have column names? So we do, actually. We have, it's called year and internet usage. So we're going to make sure yes is selected. How is the data delimited? by white space, a comma, a semicolon, or a tab. Well, clearly in this case, you can see it's delimited by a comma. And are there decimal places? Well, there actually are. When we look at internet usage, we're looking at percentages here. And how is that decimal represented? Well, a period or a comma? Well, obviously in this case, a period. And if there are quotes in your data, reviewing it to see how that's represented either as a single quote or a double quote, or if there are any. And you'll see below, What's, what R calls the data frame that it's going to create. So it looks like we're ready to import. So here you'll notice in your workspace, there's 22 observations of two variables. So you, this is our full data set. And you'll notice that the column names are here, year and internet usage. Notice that the column name internet usage, there's a period between the internet and usage. Um, this is because R does not recognize white space. And if we scroll down, we'll see that, OK, we actually do have 22 observations. And the command to actually view our data is view China Internet. 
Next, we want to learn a little bit more about our data beyond what we can see from simply just looking at the, the raw data set. We do that by executing the summary commands in the command console. So we just simply type in China Internet and press Enter. We have a series of data points from the min year of 1990 to the max year of 2011 and a value for each with a min internet usage of zero and a max of 38.3 per 100 people. It's important to know the range of your data points. The min and max can be particularly helpful when setting upper boundaries for your data on your X or Y axis. Let's go back to our task. Our task is to create a static display to clearly show how internet usage has changed since 1990. Well, there are many display types that we can choose from. A bar graph, a line chart, a dot plot, a dot bar graph, a radio plot, a calendar. Let's try to create a few of these and select the best one. As I mentioned earlier, here's the framework for the qplot function. qplot takes many parameters. So the first parameter is x. x is the column of data or our variable that we want to show on the x-axis. Y is the column of data or the variable that we want to show on the Y axis. Data represents our data set. So in this case, we'd say China Internet. Geom, this is a very important parameter. This is where we actually note the type of visualization we want to create, whether it's a bar chart, whether it's a line chart, and we can choose values from point, smooth, box plot, line, histogram, density, bar, or jitter. Feel free to try any of those out. The parameter called main is actually our title. So we might title it Internet Usage in China from 1990 to 2011. Our X lab, that stands for X label, the label for our X axis. And Y lab stands for Y label. Let's begin by creating a bar chart. When we use qplot to create a bar chart, we have to add one other parameter called stat and give it a value of identity. We have two values that stat can take as a parameter. That's either identity or bin. If we are creating a histogram um, using the bar chart geom type, we would, we would set that to bin, where we group values into bins. When we use identity, we're actually plotting each specific data point. So let's plot it. So simply go to the console, type in what I have on the screen, press Enter. And you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a beautiful bar chart. And if you wanted to save that bar chart, you can simply say export and save plot as PDF. And save it in the directory my data viz charts. Call it bar chart China Internet. So let's try another chart. How would we do that? Well, the key parameter is actually this geom pra parameter. So let's say that we wanted to create a point plot. Now we can see our point chart. Again, we'll save that as a PDF. Next, let's say we wanted to create a step chart. We simply change that parameter to step. Now let's, let's go back and look at our bar chart that we created initially. Notice the bar chart is very similar to the step chart. The line of the step chart is very close to the outline of the bar chart. Not exactly, but very close. So if you weren't satisfied with those displays, let's create one more. We'll create a line chart. Again, simply keeping everything the same. And we'll save this one. You can toggle through and see which one best represents the task, displaying how internet usage in China has changed. As you can see, R is super easy for visualizing data, but the rendering of the display could use a little work. It would be nice if we could annotate this chart and make a few changes. Let's use Adobe Illustrator to fix up our graphs. You can use Illustrator or other open source vector graphic programs to modify your graphs. You just want to make sure that you save your graphs in R as a PDF to allow for easy editing in Adobe Illustrator or another graphics program. In Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to open the line chart. You'll notice that there are two arrows here. There's a, uh, a direct selection tool and a selection tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selection tool to remove some of the chart junk, the background that doesn't really add to the data. We also want to remove all these grid lines. So I'm just clicking and deleting. You can also change the text itself, which is really great. Another thing that you may want to do is you may want to annotate and add the actual number. And you do that by simply using the text tool. Clicking here, 38.3. 
You notice that the X and Y labels, we could use there to be a little bit white space there for readability. And we might already know that 1990, 1995, 2000, 2005, and 2010 represent the year. So we might even eliminate that. You probably don't need those tick marks next to each of the, the values on the Y axis. So you can you simply select them and press delete. And you may want to change the, the, the font size for the values. Let's say we want to make this the stroke of this line thicker. So to do that, we select the black arrow, we click on the area around the line, and we're going to right mouse click, and we're going to say release clipping mask. This will allow us kind of direct access right to this line. And you'll notice on the top of the screen here, I have the ability to set the weight of the stroke. And there you have it, a nicely refined chart in Illustrator. What you can do to save it as a file. You can save it as an Illustrator file or you can um, export it as a PDF. You can see the ease in which you can now interpret your chart if you're looking at the one that we created before compared to the edited chart. However, it's not done. You'll have to continue working on your chart and add attribution. So you want to add the source of your data. So we'd add our data source, World Bank 2012 and perhaps modify the story that we started. So to learn more about R, check out the stat methods site, and also it provides more information on the ggplot.